Hello everyone and welcome back to the Keep Productive YouTube channel. Today is the first video of the mini series that we're doing here on Keep Productive all about Tiago Forte. Um, so we will be chatting about three topics. The first today will be the second brain and best tools to begin implementing a routine and an organization system like this. The second will be things three. Uh, Tiago is going to show us around his account. And the third will be a notion conversation with me and Tiago. So let's dive straight in. Uh, Tiago, how are you doing? I'm good, Francesco. Thank you. It's really a real pleasure to be here with you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, and it's like a, de a week dedicated to some of your, all of your sort of wisdoms and uh, and uh, learning. So uh, I'm so I mean, honored. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be good. Uh, and uh, obviously, for those who don't know who Tiago is uh, already, um, you can check out the video we did at the start of the week. Um, but you're probably most um, famed for at least like I know you most from the second brain um, concept. For those who may be totally new to it, can you give like a short sort of premise on what it's about? Yes. So Building a Second Brain is the name of my course. Uh, it's, it's an online program, an online course, uh, soon to be a book. I am working on the book uh, sometime in the next year, year and a half, and that should be out. But basically, the, the point of this, this idea or this program is that if you use the, you can call them information management apps, which you're very familiar with, you know, the full range of task managers and note takers and, um, you know, spreadsheets and um, word processing apps and all these different cat like mini categories that exist. If you use them in, a, in an, a very intentional and strategic way, they can be more than just this random collection of, of tools. They can actually function as a second brain. They can, they can be really this extension of your mind where anytime you encounter a piece of information or a fact or an insight or a task, there's immediately somewhere that you have to send it. It's never just like, oh, what do I do with this interesting thing? It, there's all, it's always clear where it goes. And just as importantly, maybe even more importantly, that just like in your first brain, you know, when you think of something, that, 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 that idea, that thought immediately comes to mind, your second brain works the same way. As soon as you need that fact back, or you need that insight, or you need that story to use in something you're writing, it's kind of right at your mental fingertips. Um, and I call that that system of, of, of apps your second brain. Amazing. And you didn't tell me that you had a book coming out. That's, that's uh, some news you should have told me, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's sir. exciting. Congrats. Um, and uh, obviously, the, the second brain uh, has been helping a lot of people in terms of that concept of actually organizing themselves without having to stress about the things that are current. Um, what does your second brain look like uh, in terms of a day-to-day -day sort of interactions with it? Yeah, so I use Evernote um, as my notes app of choice, as my, my knowledge management system, uh, or my second brain. Uh, although, that said, um, people go through my course, and it's, it's really a... a um, a widely applicable methodology. People have used just every app under the sun, probably two dozen different apps to build their second brain. So, you know, it's really, and, and this might be a, a shock of cold water to your audience. Um, <laughs> the way that I think is not tool first. I'm not that concerned with the particularities of tools. Partly I can get away with that because there's people like you. I can just say, go watch Francesco's YouTube channel. You can find out everything you would ever want to know. Come back to me when you've chosen one. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, I'm really more focused on the behavioral, like as the human system. You know, what, what is the, the, of course, the perspectives and the mindsets, but also the habits and the behaviors, the little rules of thumb that you use in your day-to-day -day work, um, making those just, like I said, more intentional and strategic. Um, and it, it kind of is formulated as four steps, four stages, which spell the word code, C-O-D-E, and I call it the second brain code. Um, and we can go through those if you want, but really they just, they are essentially the universal steps of the creative process. For every knowledge worker and every knowledge worker these days is creative. They are already in some way following these four, four steps. I'm just trying to help them do it a little more systematically. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, please do go into a bit more detail on code because I think it would be beneficial for the audience. So those letters stand for collect, organize, distill, and express. 
And I encourage, you know, people watching, listening to, to think about how this manifests in your own work, because I guarantee you it does. Um, yeah, so let's just, let's just uh, go through them. Uh, the first one is collect. So your second brain needs some point at which you actually save things, right? Maybe someday it will just be like this little, you know, thing you clip to your shirt um, and it will just record all your conversations, all your thoughts, all your ideas, everything you do. Uh, for now, you have to actually, you know, use a web clipper. You need to write things down on your in the notes app on your phone. You need to create a new uh, task on your computer. There's there's these actions, right? Um, and the thing that I that I tell people here is just to collect anything that resonates. Often people don't know, like, oh yeah, I write down my grocery list and like my you know top three to dos. But what what should I be capturing? So think about like when you read an online article or a blog post right? Usually there's like one or two or a handful of phrases or passages that really stick out to you. Save those, copy them, paste them into a notes app. Um, if you read eBooks, as many people do these days, um, many people actually highlight, if you just put your, your finger down, say on the Kindle app and you drag it, it will highlight in yellow. Um, and there's many people that even do the highlighting and don't know you can export those highlights. With like a few taps, you can say export and send only the best passages straight into your notes app. Um, and I'll just give one more example. Uh, audio capture apps. Now, I have, I've been tracking these for some years, but they're, they're just getting to the point where it's like 97 to 99% accurate. Um, like there's this one called Otter AI. The website is otter.ai. Um, and in this third-party study of all the different audio transcription services, this was like the, the best one. Um, and I tested it. I was on this bu busy street corner in Mexico City where I live. And I was like, okay, if it can pass this test. <laughs> and I, I, I like, you know, kind of just like walked through an idea or something I was thinking about. And then I looked at the transcription and it was almost perfect. Like even with the cars honking. And I was like, okay, we're finally ready for audio capture. <laughs> yeah, it, it is a good app in that. Like I tried it out and I was like, wow, it's surprisingly accurate. Um, and yeah, I mean, that sort of thing is going to be crazy, especially for meetings, because it's just going to like totally automate that entire process. Yeah, yeah, I, I do that too. Um, Zoom, you can set Zoom to automatically record any, uh, any video, right? Kind of like we're doing right now. And it saves it to a folder on your computer. If I need a transcript of the meeting, I just get on rev.com, R-E-V, send them that audio recording and in one or two hours they give me a, a transcript back it's it's not cheap yet because you still need a human to check it but yeah. that price is just going to keep going down 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 that's it yeah and and maybe uh after we'll be able to i think they do some sort of file upload anyway but yeah it's an exciting application and and the o is for organization right yeah this is the big one right <laughs> the, the the average person that comes to much that comes to me uh, you know, downloaded one of these apps, which, which all make it very easy to collect, right? People don't really have trouble collecting things. Um, but then soon you look at your, your file system or your inbox or whatever it is, and you go, oh my gosh, this is all valuable stuff, but what do I do with it? How do I structure it? How do I organize it? Where do I put all this? Um, and for that, I have a, a technique, uh, a system called Para. Uh, which is another four-letter acronym. <laughs> <laughs> you love those four-letter acronyms. <laughs> I, I do. I, lo I love my four-letter words. Um, <laughs> and actually, there, there's a free blog post on my, on my blog. If you just search, you know, Para and my name, it'll come up. Um, but essentially, Para is just a way to completely organize your entire digital life, or in this case, a note-taking app, in very little time, using a very simple group of four categories. Um, I don't know if we want to get into that, but essentially Para is just, it's the solution to digital organizing. It's probably the easiest, like early win that people get is just, wow, in like 30 minutes, I can organize, even if I have thousands of notes, I can just have them organized. I'll, I'll show it on the screen because uh, it's actually something that I, I think that's when I first did your course, like when I was like 17 or something like that. And, and that was the first organization system I implemented. And like I just recommend it to so many people because it's like it's universal and it moves with you. So that's one of my favorite things um, about the, the the process. So yeah, and and D. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so th this is kind of the 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 stepchild, the neglected stepchild of organizing. 
because people don't realize, you know, when you save notes, <clears throat> notes as I've defined them, like let's say you save, you save some highlights from an ebook that you're reading, right? My highlights from, from an ebook, especially one I really like, will often be thousands of words. Hmm. You know, I've had like 5,000 words, 10,000, 15,000 words that are just the notes, just the highlights. And that's super valuable, but then you can't really work with something so large in an easy way, right? Like I, I use the analogy of a suitcase, right? If you have a suitcase, the bigger the suitcase, the fuller the suitcase, the heavier the suitcase, the more important it is that it has what? A handle, Yeah. right? You need a handle to be able to lift it and move it and turn it. Otherwise, you're just like, it's this crazy unwieldy thing. So the, uh, the funny thing is the more notes you keep and the more diligent you are about saving all the interesting information you come across, the more critical it is that you distill each of those notes down to one handle, one easy summary, a little distilled summary that you can just at a glance, right? Because in your day-to-day -day work, you know, how much time do you have to review your note, review your notes in your day-to-day -day work, like seconds, right? So you need to be able to just glance at a note almost instantaneously grasp what it's about, what it's for, and then either use it or don't use it. Um, and for that, I use a system called progressive summarization. Um, progressive summarization is a really just a highlighting technique. And often it boggles people's minds that that's something they learned in like grade school and have probably been doing their whole life. If you just tweak it a little bit, it becomes this incredible um, distillation process. Oh wow! Uh, I've, never, I've not. I'm gonna have to. You're gonna have to send me the article for this one because <laughs> I haven't touched into this area yet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's pretty simple to describe. It's basically highlight the best parts of something you're reading. That's the thing that everyone already does mostly, but then highlight the best parts of those highlights, and then highlight the best parts of those highlights. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, like just drilling down until. You get the core elements of it. Exactly. Yeah, because it's hard, you know, when you have a, a very large piece of text, it's hard to know what, what is the main point. Mm, you, don't, yeah. you don't really know. You can't just have it instantly. So with progressive summarization, you, you get, you drill down to that main point progressively. You do it in multiple stages. And sometimes those stages are spread way out over time. You know, like I've sometimes read a book a year later, I do my first highlights, like on the, the, the main passages I've kept. A year later, I do the second layer, right? So your, your learning process and your reading, instead of being this one moment in time, right? That's how reading is for most people. They read this one moment in time and then they hope they remember stuff. Oh, I hope, you know, in the future I'll remember what that's about. But if you get your reading and you sort of break it up and extend it across time, that information can can be absorbed so much deeper because you're revisiting it over time and interacting with it in different ways. Uh, it just is, it's a tr really transform transformative uh, approach to, to learning. Yeah, and that's, that can be for like anything from articles to research and anything in between, right? Yeah, this is the thing is like, for me, learning is just, it's not like, oh, I'm, I'm going to this class and I'm learning from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. To me, learning is what you're doing as a human 24-7, 365, right? If you watch a, uh, an, ins an inspiring movie, you learn something, even if you can't say what it was. Yeah. When you have a good conversation with, you know, a friend or a colleague, you learn something. When you listen to a podcast, obviously, you learn something. You're learning all day long. So you don't have to learn faster or try harder to learn or learn better or memorize all of that to me is not really the most important thing. The most important thing is just to collect, to capture what is already coming in. Oh, very interesting. I'm going to have to do that myself because I don't actually have a, a best practice for that yet. So that's something I take away from me. <laughs> and, uh, and finally, E, right? Yes. So E is sort of the, it's the grand finale. Um, and really it's, it's this idea that, you know, ideas, which is really what you're collecting, you know, you're co collecting your own ideas that you came up with ideas of others, ideas from books, ideas from podcasts. They are really only like, they're the most powerful when they're out in the world. Right. I sometimes come across, you know, information hoarders. 
and they just like, yeah, they're diligently saving all their, their highlights and transcribing, you know, notes from podcasts and like, you know, have cutouts from magazines and newspapers. It's like, you know, they're collecting all the stuff and then I go, well, what do you do with that? Oh no, no, no one can ever see this. It's like my secret cauldron of knowledge. And I just think that's so pointless. Yeah. It's so, it, it's equivalent to hoarding in your house. You know, where you, you like keep all the pizza boxes and like the, the little knickknacks from street fairs. Like it's, it's not really adding any value to the world. It's not advancing your career. It's not making your life richer and more engaging. It's just this like completely kind of inward facing process. So express the E is about getting it out there. You know, share it, share what you know, please. Yeah. And that can be in very, you know, explicit ways like creating a course. Uh, starting a podcast, having a blog, posting on social media, or it can just be bringing things up in conversations. It can be having, you know, dinner parties and actually having something to say, Yeah, that's you know, instead of the, the, the gossip of the evening, like actually, Oh, I just read this book. It's called sapiens. And I read that, you know, humans over time, and no, like, I love when people have those kind of conversations instead of like, Oh, so, you know, what are you doing this weekend? Yeah. Um, so I, I encourage people to use this. And the, the reason this whole, this whole process is justified is for you to share and express your unique voice in the world. That's interesting because it makes it easier to be able to find stuff as well, because you're not like creeping through loads of different files and you're giving some sort of social benefit. Yeah. And, and the good thing is as well, like I noticed that you do a lot on Twitter anyway. So you've got basically got a backlog of all your learning history as well through Twitter. So it's like totally. a triple kill, right? <laughs> it is. Yeah. All these things, you know, knowledge is so reusable. You say something, say here on a YouTube video, you know, I'm, I'm watching your facial reactions. If I say something and, and that makes you go, Oh wow. Interesting. A little dope, a little hit of dopamine in my brain goes off and goes, Oh, that, that was socially valued. Right. Yeah. So then the next time I'm teaching a workshop, um, which I do all the time, I'm more likely to bring up that piece of knowledge or that example. And then if more, you know, eyes light up, then I'll use it even more. Yeah. So yeah, you want to constant, it's like you're constantly cultivating and recycling and reusing knowledge and refining it. You know, like, like think about whatever the knowledge is that you have, whatever your expertise is, whether it's accounting or engineering or animal husbandry, whatever you want to be refining that knowledge over time, right? It's not only about absorbing it from external sources. That is important. You need to have something coming in the door, but then once you have it, you can refine, you can improve, you can clarify, you can, you know, improve how you communicate it, how you formulate it. Like your thinking can't actually get better. That's the crazy thing. <laughs> thinking is a muscle. Your brain is like a muscle that can get radically better over time. And that to me is the point of these, you know, all these tools that we talk about, productivity apps. Like if you just become eternally dependent on productivity apps, I'm not sure it's like the best thing, right? Ultimately, a tool is a training device that gives you a new internal capacity, a new internal capability. And you have that capability even when there's, when you're not using the apps, yeah, right? Definitely. Yeah. And, uh, and like, it's not about that sort of, it's about learning through a process and, and working out what the tools suitable for you at the time as well. So, yeah. And, and talking about tools, like obviously the, the second brain uh, demands good quality tools. Um, do you have like a, uh, maybe two or three or four that you commonly recommend? We go Evernote's one, obviously. I do, you know, I do have some, some criteria, some guidelines for this. Um, I have a post, a free post on my blog called um, The Case for Digital Notes that has quite a few. And then there's another post that, that we could link to called something like The Essential Requirements for Your Note-Taking App to be Used as Your Second Brain. <laughs> oh, beautiful. That, <laughs> that, that's like the answer to the question. That's lovely. <laughs> yeah, but I'll give you, so, so what I, what I to, to kind of summarize what's, what's to be found there is um, you really want to pick an app that's just stable. You know, that's been around for a while, that is well supported by a competent development team, um, preferably that's making money, yeah. you know, like otherwise it's likely to be acquired by Microsoft and disappear in six months, <laughs> um, as, as happens to so many productivity apps. Um, so just ha has, a, has a basic but well supported feature set 
um, has weight, has a mobile app. Like just, I'm looking for the basics. I'm looking for something that covers all the bases rather than the new crazy shiny thing yeah. or the really, you know, interesting experimental thing, but has not had any, you know, uh, bug fixes in five years. Um, and the reason for that is like, just like your first brand, you want your second brain to be super reliable. Reliability is key. If you go to search for something that you saved and it's just the thing is spinning and it freezes and it crashes and it's, it's not a really good situation. That's it. Yeah. So, uh, obviously the, the, the big boys have a do the good job at that. So happy days. Um, Tiago, uh, where can everyone find you after this episode? Obviously it's going to be a three part guys. So <laughs> stay tuned. <laughs> Yeah, if they want to know more about my course, it's buildingasecondbrain.com. Um, that has all the information on that. Um, and if you want to know anything else, my website is fortelabs.co, uh, F-O-R-T-E-L-A-B-S dot C-O. Um, and I have a series of eBooks. I have other online courses. I do workshops and speaking. Um, and yeah, I encourage your, your subscribers to check me out and to let me know if there's anything that any questions they have or anything they'd like to know. And, and I'm happy to answer. I'm most active on, on Twitter where my handle is at Forte labs. Fantastic. Um, it's going to be fun. We're, we're still going to carry on chatting, but for those who are listening along or watching along, um, you guys can stay tuned for, uh, this week. Another one we're doing is we're going to dive into Tiago's things for account and then talk about notion as, as a separate video. Um, but if you, um, want to know more, feel free to check out the video that we posted at the start of the week. I'll link them all in the description. Anyway, Tiago, let's, uh, let's go and chat about things three now. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> all right.